Hello guys, what's up? Codeforge here. Today we will be talking about configuring and customizing our applications. So we will work with the application properties, configuration classes and configuration bins. So our application will be customizable after building it and deploying on the production environment, for example. I have already created configuration demo Spring Boot project using Spring Boot Initializer. If you want to see how I'm doing it, you can check out my two videos, one for the Eclipse IDE and one for the IntelliJ IDE, where I am creating project like this, then downloading it, importing to the selected IDE and run it. So let's start coding. After importing the project, you should have the same structure. Uh, the names uh, could be different, but the basic structure should be the same. And in the source main Java, uh, you should have the resources directory and the application properties file inside. This is the place where we can define our own custom properties, but also we can override existing properties predefined by the Spring Boot. One of the pre-configured properties is the server port. And this is the property that uh, defines the port on which our service is working on. So we can override it by simply using the name of this property. So we will say server.port and assigning the new value. And the default port on which Spring Boot applications are working is the 8080 and we'll change it to the 8081. This is basically the way how you want to override the default Spring Boot properties. If you want to learn more about those properties, if you want the entire list of them, you can check out the Carbon Spring Application Properties chapter in the Spring documentation. Now let's imagine that our web service will communicate with the different web service and we still don't know what will be the address and the port on which this service will be available. So we can create property which can be changed later. So let's say it will be integration service URL and we will set it to HTTP localhost and it will be 8090. Now let's try to access those properties in our java code to do it we will create package so we select new package and we will say it will be configuration and inside we will create the java class that will be called app configuration okay now we want to mark this class as the configuration class and to do it we will use configuration annotation so we type add sign configuration and it is auto imported from the spring framework because this class is annotated with this configuration annotation spring will create a bin for that and uh, this uh, bin will be injected whenever it's needed in the code now we can access our properties file and to do it we will use the value annotation and in the constructor of this value annotation, we will provide in the quotation mark dollar sign curly braces the name of the property which we want to access. And the first one will be the server port which we want to access for unknown reason because we want to. So we say string, let's say it will be string, yes, server port. And also the second one, the custom one we have created we will do exactly the same and it was the integration service url okay so we integration service url this way and let's say we will have the same property here like that it is not required to create dedicated class to access your properties you can just simply use this format with the value annotation to access your properties in every Spring Manage bin. But it is highly recommended to use this dedicated uh, configuration class because all your configuration is living in the one spot and it is easy to access. 
Okay, so now we can try to access these properties in our main class and later on we will add the Spring Web dependency to our project and we'll try to access it from the service or maybe controller, we'll see. Okay, in the first place we can access the context. We can see over here on the run method that it returns configurable application context. So let's access it. To do it we will say configurable application context we'll create the context name variable and uh, now we can use this context to access our bin so we'll say get bin and we'll provide the name of our class which is app configuration dot class and we want to also assign it to the app configuration variable with the same name okay let's also create a logger so we will go over here we'll create logger which is the type of logger and we will use logger factory to create one and we'll say get logger and we want the logger for our class which is configuration demo application class and we also have oh sorry we have to import it okay the class is imported and now over here you know what our logger will not work because we will use it in our static method and we cannot reference the non-static field in the static method so we have to add private static here and now it's good so we can go here we can access those properties by saying app configuration dot and our properties are not here because properties in the app configuration are package private so we can set them to public or set them to private and create getters and we'll do it so we'll set them to private and we'll generate getters like this and now we can go back also let's change this logger name to log because i'm most of the time using the log name and now in the app configuration we can access server port and let's wrap it in the log info method because we want to log it to the console and we'll do exactly the same for the second property the custom one we have created by calling the get integration service url getter on our app configuration object now it is the moment of truth we will run our application by clicking the play button next to our main method and after a few seconds our application should be up and running so uh, as we can see over here we have two logs which we have created the first one with the overridden proper server port property which is 8081 and the second one with our custom property with the url to the integration service and if we open up the application properties file we can see that it is exactly the same so now let's try to access those properties from different bins First of all, we'll add the dependency to our project. So we go to the POM file and over here in this dependency tag, we'll add the dependency for the Spring Boot Starter web. Okay. And also let's click this uh, pop-up over here, import changes so or enable auto import. So the package will be installed in our project. Now we can create simple controller and the service. So first of all, let's create two packages. So we select new package and we will say services and also new package and we will say controllers. As first, we will create controller. So we right click new Java class and let's call it properties controller and we will annotate it with the rest controller annotation 
let's also create a service with the name uh, property service property service okay and let's mark it with the service annotation so now we can auto wire it in our controller or we can inject it through the constructor and this is the preferred way so this is what we will do so we create the property in the first place with the type of the, the property service and the same name uh, let's say yeah okay and now we want to create the constructor with this and now it's good let's make it private and now we can add the endpoint which we will call to get the property so it will be get mapping and it was the value i believe it will be properties and the same method for now it will be void get properties it will not take any arguments in the body of this method we want to call the method from the property service which do not exist yet but we will create one so we type get properties this is the name of this method so let's generate it okay it's here and in this in this class we want to inject our app configuration class which we have created at the beginning with our properties to access it okay so we go here and we'll do the same like in the properties controller so we type app configuration with the same name and we want to generate constructor so it will be injected to this class by the spring from this method we want to return only the one property which we access we don't care about the second one so all we want to do is to change the signature to string instead of void and we want to access app configuration so configuration class and we want to get integration service url and we want to return it of course okay that's good and this is all we have to do over here now we can go back to our controller all we want to do over here is to change the signature to response entity since we want to wrap our response so it will be generic type string and over here we want to return our property wrapped into response entity so we say return new response entity we don't have to pass the generic type over here because it is inherited from the method signature and the first thing which we want to return is our property and at the second thing is the status and it is good to go so guys we have covered uh, two ways of accessing our our properties file the one from the application context over here in the main method so we are getting the context and we are getting the bin out of the context and we are accessing our configuration class and the second way is by injecting our configuration class to the spring bin which is the property service and after that we can simply call the method that it, like it is the regular class so we have two different approaches and the last thing we have to do is to detest our rest call from the controller my postman client is up and running will perform the get http request to the local host on the port 8081 and will call the properties endpoint so after firing this endpoint we can see that server handled it over here and in the response we are getting our property from the properties file oh disappeared yeah i have said at the beginning of the video that we will also cover the configuration bins which can be returned from our configuration class 
but I don't want to make it too long so I will split it up and I will make the part 2 of this topic. So if you want more stay tuned guys and see you in the next video.